Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to export a Revit model to SketchUp. And you might want to do this if you feel more comfortable post-processing in SketchUp, uh, you like the certain rendering programs that are built into SketchUp, or you just like the user interface of SketchUp and how easy it is to make animation walkthroughs there as opposed to Revit. Uh, it's actually all pretty easy, so I'm going to show you how to do it with this model. It has uh, basically the most common Revit objects in it, like the doors, windows, walls, roofs. I even put a staircase in there that leads to nowhere. Don't question it architecturally, uh, it's just going to show you how useful this tool is. So if I want to export this, I'm going to go to Main Menu, click Export, CAD Formats, and DWG Files. So how this is going to work is I'm going to export a DWG file from Revit, and there's certain versions of SketchUp that can import DWG. Now the newest pro versions of SketchUp 8 or 7 have this built in, but if you don't want to pay for that uh, program, then you can find it in earlier versions of the free programs like SketchUp 6. Now I've included a link if you want to download that uh, as part of this YouTube video. Now on this window, there's not really anything you have to do with these tabs. Just make sure that it shows a 3D view, uh, which means you have to have been in the 3D view earlier in Revit. Now when you click next, here's the important thing. When you're trying to make the file, earlier versions of SketchUp can't open AutoCAD 2010, which is probably what it will be set to on automatic. So if you want to change it to 2007 and save this version of AutoCAD. Now, once you've saved it, you can go to SketchUp. And here I'm using uh, SketchUp 7 with a DWG plugin, uh, but like I said, SketchUp 6 will work just fine. You're going to go to File, Import, select that very exact model you just made and it will do some number crunching. I'll show you kind of uh, details about it. Once you click close, you'll see the model pop out of nowhere. Now, I want to warn you, this is a very buggy transfer between Revit and SketchUp. Uh, it's kind of almost hacky in a way, and you can see that there's just random walls that are uh, of a different color. Uh, but what is very useful about this transfer is that it's retained some of the information it had from Revit. It knows the difference between doors, windows, walls, and roofs. And the way it does this is by categorizing it into different layers. So when I go to Window Layers, you can see these are all uh, individual layers that came out of the AutoCAD file, which came out of the Revit file. Now the cool thing is if I deselect certain ones, they disappear on screen. And so uh, essentially I can uh, uh, deselect all of them but one and then systematically change the material properties so that this becomes a very realistic looking model in SketchUp. So I'll go ahead and do this right now, very quickly, so you can show, you can see how it works. Uh, first, I'm going to add a material property to the walls. Let's say I want them to be brick. So go ahead and do that. Then on the layers, I'm going to deselect the wall and then now show the roof. Now the wall still has the same material that I uh, just added to it, but you just can't see it anymore. I'm going to select the entire roof. Go to roofing. Let's say I want shingles here. I'm going to deselect the roof. Now here's uh, one buggy thing. For the windows, which I'm going to show next, you kind of have to select 3D glaze before you can select frame or glass to show them. And the other buggy thing is that uh, I can't really change the material properties for the trim and windows at the same time. I need to first uh, make the windows themselves entirely uh, metal, let's just say I choose that for the trim. Then I have to go in and manually change the translucency and add a glass property to both the front and back of these windows. So that's just one of the buggy things about this. Uh, it kind of is a pain, but uh, interesting things happen like, uh, say I just finished that and the final two finished. I don't really know how that happened. Uh, this is the only tedious part of the entire process. Once I finish my windows, I'm gonna go ahead and hide them in the view and go to the stairs. And here, I, let's say I want to keep with the metal, black metal theme. I'm just going to make those metal. Deselect, show the floor now. Let's say the floor, uh, I want to be uh, kind of a hardwood floor. So I'm going to select that. Hide it in view. It even has the handrails of the stairs as its own separate um, entity. And now you can see how useful this really is because uh, you would not want to model this kind of detail in SketchUp, but if you make it in Revit and then bring it into SketchUp, then you're essentially saving yourself a lot of time. I'm going to hide that, and then finally I'm going to show the door in the frame, which is also a little bit buggy. Uh, let's say I just want to make those metal too, even though it's kind of ugly. Now I'm done with all the layers. 
you know, for a complex model, there'll be much more that you do. But once you've gone through this process, uh, you can show everything and suddenly you've saved an incredible amount of time to create an actually very detailed model uh, that would have been very hard to build in SketchUp. Just imagine making these window trims and the stairs like I just said. So this is a useful model to use now. You can make renders with it, you can cut sections, you can do animation walkthroughs, and this just goes to show how useful the transfer is from SketchUp to Revit. Because with Revit, uh, you have a lot of power, but you don't have a lot of user um, ease of access and ease of manipulation. Whereas in SketchUp, you know, it's just kind of easy for everyone to use, easy to convey and communicate. So I highly suggest uh, anyone working uh, on the architecture of their models to build in both Revit and SketchUp and use the best of both worlds.